Thank you, Senator Ernst. Uh, Senator Gillibrand, please. Thank you, Congresswoman Harmon. Thank you, Ambassador Edelman. So grateful for your testimony, and thank you for the great work of this report. One of the things that you concluded was that uh, the DOD should invest more in cyber capabilities and capacity. Over the last two NDAA cycles, we included a cyber academy um, to create an ROTC type program. There's about six, 600 schools eligible right now across the country um, who are already participating in this program. It's built on an NSA, a smaller, much smaller program. Um, can you talk a little bit about how this cyber academy and its thousand, a thousand slots a year could help meet DOD's future needs? I, I don't doubt that it will help, um, you know, fill the gap because we need more cyber warriors. I do think that Cyber Command has actually done a pretty good job, uh, Cyber Command and NSA, uh, under General Nakasone's leadership and, and now his successor, at, um, at building the force, um, which, uh, you know, when we looked at this uh, from the commission point of view six years ago, there were questions about how well we were doing. I think we've actually made a lot of progress uh, in in the ensuing years. But uh, obviously, the more we can generate young cyber warriors who are you know willing to uh, come to work for the government, because that's been an issue in the past, that is going to be a, a boon. So I would just add that, that uh, and I'm not sure you were here when we talked about it, that the two new defense domains are space and cyber. And we now have Space Force and we have Cyber Command and slowly uh, we are building the skill sets that we need for our uh, defense capability, not just in the Pentagon to be robust and effective. And so um, a major cyber attack on US soil could presage China's annexation of Taiwan. That's something we mentioned before. That could happen. Are the, is the American public aware of this and ready? Absolutely not. Is there Chinese technology all over America, including in our ports? Absolutely. And so building more capable uh, uh, people uh, who have the training uh, and having a, a more focused government on the threats is, are, are both essential things to do. Mm -hmm. So one of the concerns I have is that the current recruiting t uh, technique for um, uh, Cybercom and Cyberforce is that they're recruiting from the existing services. So Navy has to give X number every year, Army, Marines, et cetera, Air Force. And not all the services can meet the goals. Not all the services have the senior cyber personnel that a cyber command actually needs and wants. And when they do leave to Cyber Command, then there's no cyber expert left in the service because they just gave those uh, personnel to Cyber Command. So one question I have for space as well. Shouldn't we consider having a West Point for cyber or a West Point for space or having one new service academy to educate and train the um, military personnel for Cyber Command and Space Command? And the reason I say this is because the cyber academy that we have created is just civilian jobs because 50% of all cyber jobs are civilian. So let's at least recruit from the entire country in an ROTC type program for non-military personnel. And so that arguably can be a thousand kids a year graduating with that capability. So let me push the next question. A thousand of civilian personnel is great. Not gonna meet all our needs. Do you think we should think about or at least do a study on the importance of perhaps having a service academy to directly train uh, military personnel and commanders in cyber and space? It, it's not something we examine, Senator Gillibrand, but I certainly think it's uh, something worth some study to, to see whether that would generate the kind of uh, flow through that you would want to, to staff those, those skill sets, as my colleague just said. And we also talk about integrating the tech base with the DOD base and, and make, make a recommendation that the business model of the tech base may be much more successful than the business model, um, you know, uh, government at the pace of bureaucracy of the, of the Pentagon. And the tech base produces a lot of highly trained cyber 
uh, folks through our, our national university system and private universities. So I, I, I think the study is still a good idea, but I also think there are resources we're not leveraging that we could. So uh, even a more serious question, um, you conclude that given that much of the critical infrastructure that the United States relies on for the projection, power projection overseas falls outside of the DOD's remit, the department needs to further its integration right. with and increase the capability of the other parts of the U.S. government, including DS, DHS and CISA, intelligence community, FBI, and state and local governments. Um, this finding I find to be the most troubling because um, it's entirely outside the DOD's mission. It's outside their authority. It's outside the job they want, the job they're willing to do. But in actuality, um, we don't therefore have domestic cyber defense. FBI is the best cyber response organization under the globe. CISA can literally only offer best practices, and their best practices are the best practices, and they're doing great outreach and all the things. But there's no one to stop, and this goes to Senator Angus's, Angus King's um, questions. There's no one to stop a, a significant cyber attack, let's just say, on military bases, um, taking out all of our capabilities domestically to have an electric grid, a water supply, a food supply, um, emergency services, uh, stock exchanges. There's no one to stop that as if we'd want that in a war scenario. And we stop a bombing that's going to happen on our subway system, but we don't stop a cyber attack that's about to hit on our subway system. We'll do response. Um, we do offensive. So with the zero seconds I have left, could you please talk a little bit about what we should be doing from a cyber defense for the homeland? This year's NDA has a requirement for a plan for how to protect at least our military bases. But I think we should be protecting all of critical infrastructure. Uh, look, I agree. And, you know, I think the department is just beginning to wrap its arms around this problem that that as I, I'm not sure if you were in the room, uh, Senator Gillibrand, when we said earlier, the homeland, if there's a conflict, is not going to be a sanctuary anymore. And the first uh, attacks will likely be in the cyber, cyber domain. And they will be incredibly uh, disabling uh, for um, the, our society, but also for the department. But um, getting all of the agencies of government that would have a role in all this, because it it goes beyond just DOD, it goes beyond just DHS, I mean, it goes to the Department of Transportation, it goes to uh, Commerce, I mean, there's just, it, it's an unbelievably uh, complex issue, and we're only, I think, now kind of wrapping our minds around it, and it needs a lot more work and attention from the department. I think that Senator King mentioned that this committee just confirmed an Assistant Secretary of Defense for Cyber today. It's way too late, it's way too slow. You're absolutely right that all of this stuff has to be accelerated. I do think some of our capabilities that we can't talk about publicly are more extensive than people may believe, but the public is essentially clueless about the massive cyber attacks that could be launched any day by our adversaries, not just nation states, but rogue actors as well. Thank you, Senator Schulman. Senator Smith, please. 